I recently bought a new computer and decided to give DaVinci Resolve on Linux a try. After reading several positive comments about its functionality as a free video editor for Linux, I always approach these situations with a hint of skepticism. In my experience, most video editors for Linux just don't stand up to Blender's video sequence editor. However, since Resolve is developed by Blackmagic Design, a serious industry player, I figured I'd give it a shot. First, the installation. From what I've read on Blackmagic Design's forums, here's where most Linux users fail. With helpful responses ranging from blaming a user's insufficient hardware, to telling them they need to use a different Linux distribution altogether. It's worth noting that I've installed and used Blender on $40 ARM devices, like the Odroid C2. And while the experience was rather lackluster, the software installed and it ran. There were no errors related to GPU drivers or snarky forum users blaming my hardware or my operating system. It just installed, and it does every time, on every computer I've ever owned. Blender is simply better than DaVinci Resolve at being cross-platform and available to anyone for free, hands down. As more users adopt desktop Linux, more and more proprietary software is becoming available to the Linux community. While this is certainly a welcome transition, the shape it usually takes leaves a lot to be desired. Binary installers are written haphazardly with no respect to the way Linux or Unix-like systems are built, or applications are offered as bloated containers including libraries and other components you may or may not already have installed on your computer. On top of all that, when you install proprietary software on your computer from any source, there's no way to verify that application is doing what it's intended to do and only what it's intended to do. Blackmagic Design offers DaVinci Resolve as a freemium product with built-in features that are disabled. Prompts to pay for their expensive professional software only appear when you try to use disabled features. If you find yourself 80% of the way through a project on a Friday afternoon and you're greeted by this paywall, I can only imagine your frustration. Blender not only includes every feature for free, but also some experimental and community-built add-ons. You can also install add-ons from a file, meaning the possibilities are pretty much endless. Resolve will never be able to do that, unfortunately. Video codec support with DaVinci Resolve's free version was actually the showstopper for me when I tried using it. I found it completely ridiculous that I couldn't open H.264 video to edit. I figured there must be something wrong with my installation when it didn't appear to work properly, until I read on the support forums that H.264 video isn't supported. Ouch. While converting video from H.264 to Apple ProRes or some other larger file may be acceptable for some users, this is where I drew the line. There's no reason I shouldn't be able to edit video in arguably the most widely used video codec. Blender's use of open source video codec libraries allows it to easily load and render H.264 video, along with raw codecs from a wide array of devices. In fact, come to think of it, I've never actually attempted to open a video file in Blender and have failed. It works, every time. While Resolve's Fusion Motion Graphics interface brought back warm memories of Natrone and some other software I've tried for node-based motion graphics and compositing, I found the feature set to be confusing. Perhaps I would have taken more time to fully embrace it if I was able to import my video file. On top of that, I'm sure there are some features that are missing from the free version of Fusion anyway. With all that being said, I'm confident that between Blender's video sequence editor, 3D modeling interface, motion tracking capabilities, and compositing, I can accomplish much more complex visual effects with Blender alone. DaVinci Resolve boasts built-in audio processing, which definitely seems like a major win. But as a video creator with extensive audio production experience, Blender's ability to be used with the Jack Audio server on Linux allows me to use the digital audio workstation software I'm already familiar with to do any audio processing, while keeping my project perfectly in sync. This solution may not be a win for everyone, but Jack compatibility is always a win in my book. I can manage audio editing with all the tools and plugins I'm already accustomed to using. While most of the online help I was able to find for DaVinci Resolve on Linux was forum members telling others to use different Linux distributions when installation failed, Blender has always installed and worked out of the box on every computer I've wanted to use it on. I've also found answers to literally thousands of questions about video editing, animation, 3D modeling, and texture mapping on various forums and from videos on YouTube. I'm confident that when I hit a snag with Blender, I'll be able to find a solution from the extensive user documentation and discussion online. DaVinci Resolve will simply never have the extensive community that has been built around Blender. My point in all of this is that when companies like Blackmagic Design create freemium software for Linux users and Linux newcomers can't install it or use it properly, they assume Linux just can't do the things they want or need to do. This is way more damaging than never offering Linux compatible software at all. And while the allure of simplifying workflows by bringing all of your creative process into one piece of software can be enticing, 
It often leads to bloated, broken, or otherwise unusable software. Software that does nothing well while attempting to do everything. I hope this resonates with both Linux users and developers interested in making their products available on Linux. Let me know what you thought of this video.